greetings once again it's a pleasure to be back and it's a pleasure to be able to share these insights so today i'm going to talk about pharmaceutical supply chain careers especially for pharmacists and the reason as to why i'm talking about this is because i had a friend of mine who reached out all over the week and one of the discussion and the question that he all had for me was how do, do i position myself as a pharmacist in pharmaceutical supply chain management and what are the dynamics what are the requirements in that kind of a place of work he understands the, the specifics in terms of education and training, but at the end of the day, you need the skills to be able to do the job. And also the other bit as to why I'm going to talk about in this actually and delve further is the fact that I find there's more potential and more value in having a pharmacist in pharmaceutical supply chain management compared to a non-pharmacist or somebody who doesn't have the pharmacy background in the sense that we're dealing with medicines and medical products. And therefore, how somebody who understands the handling and the parameters behind that handling is critical in terms of ensuring the supply chain management framework is robust and meets the intended outcomes at the end of the day. So when you look at it in pharmaceutical supply chain management, it's about you being able to coordinate the supply of medicines from one point to another, definitely from the manufacturing plant to the end consumer who is the patient. And when you talk about it from the manufacturing plant, is also looking at the supply chain, which will ensure the raw materials, the active pharmaceutical ingredients, excipients, and all that are available at the right time in the manufacturing plant so that the production management team are able to do that production. And therefore, the information that has a pharmaceutical supply chain management, you are having within the supply chain for medicines, medical products, will influence the work of the pharmaceutical supply chain specialist at the industry level who is looking at procurement of raw materials and will also influence the activities of the production manager in ensuring at what timelines do I produce my medicines and what are the timelines that I need to ensure that I cater for to ensure that patients never miss out on the medication that they need. So understanding that your role as a professional in the supply chain matrix is to ensure the information is available to the people who are producing the medicines, but at the same time that information is going to be conveyed to enable you to procure the medicine, to have them distributed, to have them get to the patient where they need them at the right time and in the right quantities. And the other bit that you also have to acknowledge is the fact that we are working in constrained environments where resources are limited. And with the limited resources, then you need to have planning that ensures you don't have too much supply of a product, but you also don't have so little. And therefore, in that kind of determination of quantities that you're going to order, the timelines of ordering, you also have to factor in what are the lead times. If I'm buying my medicines from company A, how long does it take for them to to supply them after order time, order intervals and the order delivery timelines? So that is the lead time. You have to know that as well. So generally, as a from supply pharmaceutical supply chain specialist, the first thing that you have to understand is your main role is a coordinating and a project management role. And I think this is something that I also need to reiterate again. Most of the current dynamics and the current facets and areas of practice for us are going to be in project management because you have to understand what are the requirements in that environment? What are the different aspects? What are the different components that need to be integrated to ensure we have a working pro program? And on that program to work, then you need to have the project management skills. And what do you need in project management? The communication. If you're working as a pharmaceutical supply chain professional, depending on the organization that you're working with, assuming, let's say, for example, you are a mission hospital, then you need to be able to know what medicines are normally used. Which conditions do you normally attend to? What is the service charter for the hospital in terms of the scope of services they offer? Therefore, you're able to know which particular products need to be sourced. Who are the people who will give you this information? The clinician, the physicians. You have the pharmacists at the pharmacy department. Then you also need to engage with the public health professionals to understand the dynamic and the scope of diseases that are happening in, uh, affecting patients in the locality so that you're able to respond to their needs as a facility. Imagine working in a hospital in a region where malaria is not a problem they suffer from. Let's say, for example, you know, NCDs, endemic zone, diabetes, hypertension, and most of these cardiovascular complications are what they deal with. But in your procurement as a supply chain professional, you've been bringing in only anti-malarials. You're definitely missing the point because you're providing products that are not needed and they'll never be used, ultimately leading to losses. So you need to have those dynamics as well. And therefore, as a project manager in supply chain management, you need to be able to understand the people you're working with. You need to understand the market and also need to work on how do you ensure that the system is working seamlessly and efficiently to optimize the use of resources as a supply chain professional. And the starting point for you is to understand that one, as a supply chain professional, as a project manager, the first thing is in terms of forecasting. You need to understand, I'm working in this hospital, I need to understand the dynamics of what services we offer as a project manager. The next thing is to focus in terms of 
knowing these services levels and these products need to be provided, then what is the good number of products that I need to know? How many patients are we likely to see in the previous year in terms of consumption patterns? How many patients suffering from malaria did we see? What were the, what is the recommended treatment as per standard treatment guidelines? Do we need a single dose or double dose or triple dose of a particular product? Then once we know that, then we're able to quantify the products that would be coming. So you have to focus in terms of what are the patterns that will influence the disease, in, disease patterns that we have. Then once you know that, you're able to focus and know what quantities would be needed. Then you get to the quantification knowing what are the lead times from this supplier that we're dealing with. What are the required timelines for them to deliver? What is the minimum order levels? What are the maximum stocks that we can host? Probably we have a very small warehouse. And what are the additional host warehousing requirements that would be needed? What are the temperature requirements? What are the temperature conditions? Because if we don't have a cold, ch cold chain system in terms of our supply and also warehousing, then there's no need for me to stock high, large quantities of material products that will need cold chain resourcing and actually storage. So you have to look at all those and also quantify them to ensure you're able to supply without mi patients missing them, but at the same time you don't incur losses that might affect the overall operation. So the focusing and the quantification is key. Once you've done that, you need to the, get to the next phase of planning and procurement of the products. You need to now have the information, your matrix, and actually you have a project plan in how you're going to supply these products. Then you now start making orders. Once you've made your orders, you need to distribute them to the people who need them. That is the hospitals. If you're working from some of the pharmaceutical companies as a supply chain professional, it's about managing distributors and managing the clients. That is retail pharmacies, distributors, and from your end, from a manufacturing, the production line, so that you're able to meet the demands as per the focus that you have. So that is the matrix of what you need to be thinking of. After procuring and distributing, you need to collect information. Are there any gaps that are happening in the market? What are the payment timelines? So that you're able to also give that information in terms of what are the financing timelines for your company to continue producing or your company to continue distributing medicines. So as a supply chain professional, your work does not stop in having made products available. Your work gets, gets to the point where the products are available, yes, but at that point then you need to now start moving information from it has been supplied, it's available, how much of it is being used. What are the differences in the dynamics? Are you getting that information continuously? Are you relaying it to the people who need to make decisions with that information? And once they have that information, they're making decisions. Are those decisions ensuring that production doesn't stop, supply doesn't stop, and the funds flow? Because at the end of the day in resourcing, you don't supply products to supply. You supply products which are going to be consumed and therefore somebody is paying for them. Once they're paid for, the money has to go back to ensure we have a sustainable ecosystem. And that sustainable ecosystem works critical for us in terms of our supply chain management matrix. So once you understand this, then the question you need to be asking yourself, and I believe you're asking yourself as a pharmacist who is looking at venturing into the pharmaceutical supply chain management, is to ask yourself, how do I get into this space? The first thing that you need to get into this space and what you need to understand is, after your internship, you did some modest level of it in terms of the hospital, the primary healthcare facility practice, and even industrial pharmacy, if you had the chance to engage with supply chain managers. But beyond that, then after your internship, you have to start from learning. And that learning is in doing short courses that are available. Some of them are all online, virtual, and free. I have one of them that actually we recently did with Health Logistics, Kuna Foundation, Medical Logistics in Pandemic. That was a good course. You can also look at some of the programs that we have with the Empower School of Global Health Af as Africa Pharmaceutical Network. These short courses will give you insights on what you look for, what you need to understand, what are the factors that are needed there. And once you understand it from a practical, pragmatic approach in delivery of the solution, then you're able to apply the knowledge. And that is one thing that I hope you are able to learn from these short courses. Take the free ones. As you do the free ones, you can also enroll for the paid for programs. And on that account, then within the partnership we have with the Empower School of Global Health, we have masters, we have diploma, postgraduate diploma program, certificate, depending on whatever you need. And because of the partnership, then there are discounted rates. And so in case you need information on that, feel free to reach out on us, African Pharma Network at gmail.com. We'll be able to link you with them and get the discounted rates for you to get value. So the short courses would be critical for you. Then other than the short courses, you need to look for experiential learning. There's more learning that happens when you're actually practicing what you needed to know and what you need to practice. So in practice, then what are, how do you get these opportunities? First thing first, there are most of these organizations that are working in our local community. They might be faith-based institutions, they might be charities, NGOs, and CBOs. Most of them deal with, let's say, for example, a medical camp. As a 
a pharmacist who is keen on such participating in such activities, you can actually offer your services to be a supply chain pharmacist serving such kind of a CBO that works on medical camps. What do you do? You identify the communities where you are going to do medical outreach programs, medical camps, look at the data that is available in terms of diseases that people are suffering from, know the type of medication that you'd need to have, what quantities are you likely to get to deal with. Then once you have those quantities, how are you procuring them or how are you sourcing for them in terms of donations? You already have quantified measures. Then with that quantified measure, then you now move to the next phase of making the procurement or ordering from the people who are offering them as donations for you. As you do this, you are gaining the practical skills, you're able to apply them and you're able to write a narrative of theory of change of how you're applying your skills from theory to actually practice to ensure you're not incurring losses, but also serving a community need that exists rather than getting products that are not of value. So that is in experiential learning and if you're able to get a job, that is better. You can even shadow an individual as a mentor to you who is working in the pharmaceutical supply chain sector and who is willing to share that information. Finally, in terms of learning, they're in a dynamic world and there are so many changes that are happening. And what I would urge you as a young pharmacist who is looking at venturing into this place, the first thing is look for thought leaders, people who are working in this area. Learn from them with a curiosity and an intention to learn more about supply chain. And how do you do that? Ask for information. Read articles, thought leadership. There are so many articles on thought leadership in supply chain. Adoption of technologies. What are the new advances that are coming up? Read about these as much as you can. And as you read about them, also challenge yourself to write about what are your vision? What do you envision of that future? And how do you take your space as an expert? It's by sharing your insights that you're able to crystallize on them, improve on them, commit to continuous improvement as a professional. If you're able to do that, then you'll be on, the, on your trajectory and your journey to success. So what are the next steps for me? I would urge you to take as much opportunities in learning about this because you understand the technical dynamics and technical intricacies behind pharmaceutical supply chain management. You know the storage conditions are critical, the distribution, the wastages that might occur, and even the legality and the harm that comes with substantive counterfeit products. So you have to pre-qualify and verify the people you are distributing or the people you're buying from. So having this technical background, you're suited as a pharmacist to deliver. So it's about putting yourself out there, being willing to do the job, and being learning, being willing to learn and continue advancing and improving yourself. And if you're able to do that, then you'll be in a better position to serve the nation. So for me, if you have need for resources, reach out to us, Africa Pharmaceutical Network. We'll link you to the available resources. Those that are free are available in share. Those that are paid for, based on the Empower School of Global Health that the partnership we have, you'll get discounted rates, which is good for you. But at the same time, if there's a way that we can support you, please feel free to suggest them. Then we'll see how do we make that possible for you. I'm hoping we have a generation of people who are empowered and actually willing to deliver on their professional mandate and are willing to improve our pharmaceutical systems. And I hope you'll be that person. Thank you so much for following and engaging with us over time. And thank you for, for listening to this. What I would urge you is subscribe to the channel, share the link to the, your colleagues and your peers, and share your comments so that we keep learning and keep improving over time. Thank you so much and see you again next Sunday. Asante.